Hello, hello, and welcome to Mars. Okay, how's it going, guys? It's me, it's Lefty Spinhand. Um, I made some friends on the internets recently, and they were asking me questions about the design of my featured mech, my favorite robo, uh, the one that I call Ghost Zephyr Prime. This is my T10 fast moving medic crawler. And this is what it looks like. Whoa. I call this design the flat top. It's really just a rectangle. Um, my friend Zelfer describes it as a cage filled with thrusters uh, and a, a spine of helium, and that is accurate. You'll notice that uh, the guts are virtually all under tiered. You can see I've got tier six or tier seven. Uh, Oh, excuse me, tier fours, there they are, uh, heliums with a couple of buffers of the tier 10 helium, armored helium, uh, just to help add some uh, center pull. So the effect that I get here is balance that is centered right here between these two guys. So effectively there is a string run from that block straight up in everything that I do. So I will always, uh, I say always, not true, but uh, the object is so that uh, I spend as much time uh, un upside down as is humanly possible. So, uh, basic measurements you'll find uh, we've got nine blocks running across the width, I've got 17 blocks running down the length, and we are five blocks tall. One of the major considerations of being five blocks tall, I, I don't like being that tall. I want to be uh, short as possible, as close to the ground, so I can use as much advantage from cover as possible. Um, but it, I need to make sure my guns clear my legs. My legs stick up really tall. They're taller even than TX1 uh, 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 wheels. So uh, making sure that your guns clear is really critical, otherwise you end up uh, minimizing your efficiency. Six guns, I only run six guns, I do not run more. Uh, a lot of people can and a lot of people do because reload times and access and uh, range, that extra one, two, three feet can really make a huge difference in combat. So, uh, I, but uh, I run minimum guns, I run minimum legs. These are all concessions to CPU uh, because these damn TX1 blocks are uh, so freaking uh, CPU expensive. Three CPU per block. This is a 300 and, well let's double check here. 313 blocks total and that means I've got, probably got maybe 260, 270 T10 blocks and uh, I'm far too light, I don't like it. Uh, but I am very, very effective with this design. So anyway, uh, back onto construction here. So we've got a whole crap load. Um, normally these uh, helium cubes would be uh, distributed even more evenly, but for the sake of decoration, I'm counterbalancing uh, my flags underneath, and uh, well, those, those guys, my vapor trails, aren't really having any effect because of where they're located, dead center, dead center. And I believe I may also have some extra stuff in the, inside the cage here. So let's go take a look at what's down in here. These guys, I believe, are tier 7, but they could be tier 9. They look huge. I think they're tier 7. 1, 2, 3, and a fourth one there. One huge one up facing in each corner. And then these guys here will be T7s or T6s, I think. And there are four of them, one, two, three, and four. Now, one of the things that I've noticed is that the placement of the base of the jet, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Oh, that's why. That spot right there, the, the actual mounting point, that's the, the center of balance for that jet. All the lift is not coming from this point here. All of the lift that's coming from that jet being applied to my vehicle is coming from that point there. 
Well, you didn't. You wouldn't think that that would be so important in design until you start trying to get an evenly balanced performance out of your robo. And now, uh, one of the things that I've learned is that if you keep your connection point, you see it's right there. We're uh, connecting all of these jets at the second block from the bottom, and that's purely for uh, reference. But if you install your uh, vertical jets and your horizontal jets all at the same level on your robo, you're going to find a lot more control. Now, you, depending on the number and weight of your legs and the number and weight of your guns, you're going to want to be lifting or dropping that mounting point, that, that, that center of balance for your robo uh, to make sure that your flight is balanced when you're in the air. But uh, uh, yeah, interesting little little note on construction there. It, you, it, when you're trying to create balance, you need to make sure that you're always installing your thrusters all on the same level of cubes. And I don't know if I'm saying that correctly or not, but uh, hopefully you'll get you're getting the gist. So let's go take a look even more inside. It's pretty empty in here. Uh, you can see I've got these guys, I believe, are tier 4. I could be wrong on that. They might be tier 3 or tier 2. They're only one block size. Um, but yeah, I've got 1, 2 facing alternate directions. 1 and 2 yeah, alternate directions. 1 set front, 1 set back. That's how I get left and right. Now, even if I didn't have those, I would still get some modicum of turn control in the air from my legs. I want to do a whole episode of uh, uh, information about what I've learned about legs. They are so fascinating. They're probably the most versatile, in, in my opinion, most vers uh, versatile propulsion method in the game. They are stable. Uh, they grab on when you need them to. They let go when you need them to. And once you understand where, uh, 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 how to use them depending on your tier level, your, your overclock level, um, they can really, really enhance your effectiveness on the field because um, they get way stronger. Your jump height magnifies exponentially once you hit about uh, overclock 12 um, and uh, you become the jump monster. So you, you need to learn how to control that because that can also be uh, a, uh, uh, a negative uh, because you're going up too, too high up can't get down fast enough. Um, so what's the last bit of information that I have here? I keep my uh, consoles, obviously those have to be balanced uh, also, otherwise I'll get a little bit of a, what I call anal drift, um, where my ass end swings out of control up or down and I'm not coming in where I want to. So I balance the interior pieces as well. Um, you'll also notice that I've got a lot of extra weight. That's uh, 120 pounds, well that right there is, uh, is uh, 60 pounds about, so that would be 120, 240 pounds of extra weight, and that's pure uh, counterbalance against those helium there. Um, really tricky balancing the uh, upper spine weight, or lack thereof, against the uh, bottom spine weight weight, because uh, It'll affect the way you fly, and it'll affect the way you simply move, even when you're walking uh, or trying to, to jump around. Uh, all that helium can uh, slow you down. It acts like drag, uh, even when there's plenty of weight pulling against it. It still slows you down significantly. So you got that's why I use a, a lot of under tier helium, uh, as opposed to uh, a medium or small amount of uh, equal tier helium. <coughs> I get more control and I can tweak as I need to. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, vapor trails, just because I love the way they look, normally I like to have them uh, uh, on the back corners, but for the purposes of balance, once again, um, got them uh, spread out to the center. That's all decoration, doesn't affect my combat. Um, interesting question for any other Robocraft players out there who might know. Um, I myself do not find myself going, ooh, that one's got a green flag, I should shoot him. 
In your opinion, do you think that the uh, flags and vapor trails make your make make your robo a target, or do you think they're uh, exactly what they intend to be, and that is decoration that does not distract? Uh, I want to know. I haven't noticed one way or the other. So tell me what you have found in your experience. So that is how I constructed this robot. It took uh, probably about three weeks of. Uh, testing and perfecting the flat box design, the flat top design. Um, I was a big proponent of tiered design. That would be front guns down and at the very bottom, uh, middle guns at a middle level, and then rear guns at a higher level. And it is effective. It does work. But it just makes you too tall. And when you're too tall, you are a target. And when you're a healer, you're a target. And when you're a healer that's too tall, you're a big damn target. So. Uh, yeah, I, you need to. I, I, I keep, try to keep as short as possible, so I can't go any higher than I have, and I don't want to go any lower than I have because once again, legs. Uh, those legs really do interfere with my uh, uh, line of fire. So I had to build around it, which means I'm a little bit taller. And that is why one, two, three, four, five tall, as opposed to uh, what I would prefer, a three or four tall. Uh, but I would have to under-tier my legs, and that would end up uh, making me less effective on the battlefield. I was talking about these legs. These legs have uh, some sort of programming inside of them that coordinates each leg with all the other legs, and that provides you with a, uh, what, what do they call that, a gyroscopic compensation that always keeps your bottom facing the bottom and your top facing the top, and it even actually provides you some small modicum of uh, turn in air. So theoretically, uh, I could uh, run uh, a Ghost Zephyr variant without turn jets inside, save myself a little more gut space and weight, uh, and most importantly, CPU, and then I could actually fill in some more armor wouldn't be a lot though because there's only the four jets and there are four small ones so it seems to me that the uh, extra maneuverability is worth the trade-off for the maybe four extra blocks of armor that I might be able to get maybe maybe five or six extra blocks not uh, a game swaying uh, benefit to having more uh, fewer jets turn jets. So uh, that's enough of me rambling. Let's go ahead and see how this sucker performs. Um, I have gotten compliments from players that I consider to be good uh, and very good. And uh, so let's uh, show you what it looks like in combat and hopefully I won't make an ass of myself. Platoon battles last night I was trying to platoon with my friends Zilfer and Chris. And uh, we discovered that platoon wait times are, in my experience, probably uh, uh, glitchy somehow. We had a lot of problems getting into uh, battles with the three people in the platoon and then later on with two people in the platoon. So uh, we're hoping Free Jam works that out. Okay, so here's the battle class screen, and it looks like we have a partner healer on the field. Uh, another ground healer, let's see if they're crawler or roller. The battle for Gleese Lake has begun. Then over to right side tower, take care of that one first. Your fusion shield is now active. Medic copter spotted. And uh, maintain altitude. Is important, yeah. like just talking and playing at the same time. Forgive me. Your right fusion tower has been captured. Your bottom fusion tower has been captured. Big 
Rail tank spotted. Your top fusion tower has been captured. Rail tank spotted. SMG cruiser spotted. Medic copter spotted. SMG hover spotted. Your left fusion tower is under attack. Your top fusion tower has been captured. Your fusion shield has been deactivated. Your fusion shield is now active. SMG hover spotted. You have to assign priority to any 
Your top fusion tower is under attack. Your top oh, fusion man. tower has been captured. Man, that's it. Now, as long as that red exclamation's on the screen, I cannot deny my enemy the kills. SMG Walker seconds. spotted. The time he shoots uh, to the time that timer runs out, and then another SMG Hover spotted. Seconds for the reset, which is lame. So you end up it's about 13 seconds or something like that before you can actually self-destruct once you've been under fire. To be aware of you. And Medic copter spotted. Trying to self-destruct. Okay, we're back in the game here. And once again, everybody's up. Looks like right side middle. Join in. Your team has captured the top fusion tower. Your left fusion tower is under attack. Medic copter spotted. Your left fusion tower has been captured. You will distract them and they will want to shoot at you. SMG hover spotted. Your enemies who are in a better position, or your allies who are in a better position to either defend you or kill uh, your enemy. So um, you kind of want to do as much as you can to attract the attention of the bad guys. That's why flying up the middle is a bad idea. Even with jammers, uh, this one thing I didn't show you was the underside of my robo. Uh, I do have a T9 jammer over that, and uh, it's your top fusion easy. tower is under attack. Because I'm so big and because I fly so high, uh, line of sight automatically announces my presence just as good as uh, the lady in that There's a caller. SMG cruiser spotted. Your top fusion tower has been captured. Your fusion shield has been deactivated. Your fusion shield is now active. SMG walker spotted. Medic copter spotted. Your team has captured the top fusion tower. That is why auto targeting is 
so freaking useful. Auto targeting, right click, winning healer, and uh, it automatically targets your allies and offers them healing. So all I need to do is make sure my guns are clear and maximized. I've got all six barrels aiming at the same thing and not blocked up. Uh, and then I keep my crosshairs pointed at the crystals and only check where I need to be when I see them divert because of auto uh, So I can like, uh, it's easy for me to climb into the scope as I say and, uh, like, and uh, just focus on crystal and let the auto target heal my teammates as necessary. Your left fusion them, tower is under attack. Your team has captured the right fusion tower. Your right fusion tower is under attack. Your top fusion tower is under attack. Your top fusion tower has been captured. Your bottom fusion tower has been captured. Your left fusion tower is under attack. Your left fusion tower has been captured. Your fusion shield has been deactivated. Your plutonium reactor is under attack. Your plutonium reactor... Your plutonium reactor is under attack. Your plutonium reactor is under attack. Your plutonium reactor is under attack. Your plutonium crystal is nearly destroyed. Your plutonium reactor is under attack. Your plutonium reactor is under attack. Your fusion shield is now active. Your plutonium reactor is under attack. Your top fusion tower is under attack. Your plutonium reactor is under attack. Our crystals are already dying. Your top fusion tower has been captured. Your fusion shield has been deactivated.
was unaware of the requirements to be able to realign yourself. And I look at me, I'm useless. I'm gonna have to base D until tier 13 right Your now. Your plutonium reactor is under attack. 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 Your fusion shield is now active. Medic copter spotted. Your left fusion tower is under attack. of us donating 5% to the RP pool for every other player in the game. That's one of the cool things that we as preemies get to do for the rest of the community. Uh, and everybody wins. Everybody gets more RP, more tech points, and has more fun over the long run. So that was Ghost Zephyr Prime in a nutshell. Um, let's just go ahead because I know I didn't show it to you earlier. There it is. Look, see, it is a T9 jammer. There is no T T10 jammer, so it's the best one I can get. It is the only uh, electronic warfare that I have on this robo. Um, just, once again, purely concessions to uh, CPU requirements. I hope you enjoyed the game. I hope you learned from the walkthrough, and I hope I see you again. Thank <laughs> you.